Meantime, Roach holding, holding on to the gains it made after uh, releasing early stage data on its injectable obesity drug. Last month, the treatment helping patients lose an average 18.8 percent of their body weight over 24 weeks, giving the drug a potential edge in the highly competitive field. It's one of three GLP-1 candidates Roach acquired from Karmit Therapeutics back in December. Joining us for more on the GLP pipeline is Dr. Manu Chakravarti, Roach's senior vice president, global head of cardiovascular disease. Uh, Manu, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Um, good to be here. Uh, the analysts were very excited about the outcome because it, it really stacked up to Lilly's and Novo's product at the same uh, point in terms of 24 weeks in. Um, what can you tell us in terms of, you know, let's say everything's a go, <clears throat> how quickly could you potentially get this drug to market? Yeah, I mean, so look, we were really excited about this data, right? I mean, uh, as you pointed out, 19% uh, in six, mon uh, six months, roughly, translating to that's about 40 pounds or so in six months. That's that's really exciting. Uh, that's the type of weight loss that really can be, uh, you know, moving the trajectory of health, right? Over over 20% of weight loss typically results in you know massive improvements in cardiovascular health, diabetes remission, uh, protection of the kidney, etc. So I think I think we're all uh, very excited about the fact that you know this is you know a very meaningful data set. And so we're going to do everything we can to move this as quickly as possible. But you know we also know that. This is a long road, right? I mean, this is uh, drug development. Um, there's lots of journeys here, lots of milestones. Uh, so this is one of the critical milestones uh, that we want to have. Um, you know, at Roche, look, you know, we're taking a little bit of a longer-term view, uh, and we're really focused on providing uh, a data package uh, that is as competitive as possible. You pointed out that you know it is a very competitive field. Um, so the focus is really to provide as wide an access to as many people who need these medicines as possible. Mm -hmm. We didn't get too much um, in terms of the adverse uh, side effects associated with this trial, and that's what analysts are sort of looking for, although we do understand that it's a com comparable effectively. I'm wondering also if you see um, comparability in terms of the muscle loss associated with using these dual agonists similar to Lilly and Novo's product. Yeah, so I, I think uh, uh, with the 20% weight loss, you know, I think it should be anticipated that you know there will be uh, some degree of lean mass loss. So we haven't yet measured that in this particular study, but we will be collecting that data in upcoming studies, no doubt. Um, you know, having said that, I would say that we're well aware of that as a as a critical um, side effect. You know, besides the the GI tolerability that you indicated. Um, so that was that is another reason why you know we take a little bit more of a longer term portfolio centric approach. And, and really start thinking about CT388 not just as an agent in and of itself, but we also have others in our portfolio that we can combine to really think about not just the magnitude of the weight loss, but can we actually get to better quality of the weight loss, meaning preservation of the lean mass, improvement of muscle function, and most importantly, I think what patients really need is um, the weight maintenance or the durability of the response. Mm -hmm. Are any of the products in, your, in the pipeline so far, are they... Are you thinking of them as potential weight maintenance solutions? We just heard from Structured Therapeutics, and a lot of people believe that their, uh, their offering could be used as a maintenance solution. I know you've got CT996, which is an oral um, you know, agonist, and, and I'm wondering if, if that uh, is a replacement for an injectable, in your view, or if it could potentially be a weight maintenance product. Yeah, so I'm glad you asked that question because, you know, the way to think about obesity is that, look, this is not a, a disease that is a one-size-fits-all, right? Uh, it, it's very heterogeneous. So I think we need to, as, as healthcare providers and, and drug developers, uh, obligated in some ways to meet the patients where they are in their weight, weight management journey. Um, so we really, again, to reiterate a portfolio-centric view, there are people who will need the injectables, and CT388 is certainly a good, great representation of that. But we also believe that in order to really you know, meet patients where they are, we would need oral therapeutics too. And CT996 is one of those. Um, so we, we look, look at it as not only where we can use them as patient segments um, matter, but also potentially as weight maintenance therapy. So after a weight loss induction period, for example, we can very much envision using CT996 as a weight maintenance therapy. Much easier to take pills um, for majority of people than injecting you know, every week. Um, the phase one data for CT996 is uh, due out at the end of June or beginning of July. How does it look so far? Um, we'll have to wait and see. I haven't seen the data, obviously, um, uh, but but it is you know uh, anticipated very much uh, uh, you know with equal excitement, I would say, 
uh, some of the preliminary data that we had, you know, put out, you know, uh, uh, when the drug was still with Carmot, indicated mm -hmm. that this is a drug that certainly has the potential to be clearly once daily, based on its, you know, um, you know, the PK profile, and it certainly has the potential to be, uh, you know, I would say as good, if not, you know, as better in some ways uh, for other other uh, molecules in space.